So we've all thought about it. We've hoped for it. And then, some of us, if not most of us, have regretted doing it in the first place. And no, I know what you're thinking, but I'm not referring to when we all collectively watched the final season of Game of Thrones. I'm talking about something bigger than that. Smooching. Snogging. Making out. Swapping spit. Tonsil hockey. French kissing. You know, the universal language of the kiss. But it might not be as universal as we think it is. Welcome to this week's episode of Unsubscribe, where we will try to answer the question, why do we kiss? Kissing is one of those ingrained human behaviors that seem to go beyond explanation. Have you seriously ever thought about it? I don't want to sound gross, but I'm going to describe what a kiss is quickly. Kissing obviously is typically when someone takes their lips and presses it against something, usually someone, in efforts to show some form of affection or greeting. And for some reason, we have allowed the act of opening our mouth and mushing against someone else's mouth as a way to connect with a person we have positive feelings about especially romantic feelings. We could do a multitude of other things to show that kind of connection. Instead, we use our mouths. But so many of us actually yearn for this. So many of us dream about that cinematic moment in life where you meet that special someone and they spark something within you and you just hope that they feel that spark too. You think about them nonstop, all day, all night. Then the moment happens. You're face to face, you're laughing, you're talking. They lean in. The butterflies rise, they flutter, your heart skips a beat, they tilt their head, and then boom, 80 million bacteria just got dumped and swapped between your two mouths, all because you heard somewhere that French kissing was the pinnacle of mouth hugging. Did I lose some of you? Because I honestly think I probably just did. Sadly, I'm not kidding, by the way. A new study in the well-known journal Microbiome found that when you kiss, and I mean kiss like tongue, Upwards of 80 million bacteria are exchanged if you're doing it for a mere 10 seconds. Sound disgusting? That's because it is, and you like it. And so do I, and a lot of other people. We freaks. Don't worry too much though, the study did showcase that simple pecs only seem to bring in about a thousand bacteria, so it's a win, you know, so kiss away. As I was researching this topic, I started to understand and appreciate more and more that kissing seems to have many purposes. Now, these are things that we know about and we see them maybe on a day-to-day -day basis, but we don't really process them or their origins anymore. Think about it. A blow and a peck for good luck on dice. That uses a kiss. Lips to the ground after a rocky plane ride, you're kissing the ground. Kisses thrown in the air by a grateful Broadway cast at Curtain Call, they're literally throwing, you know, invisible kisses into the air into the audience. And then you have the obvious long, slow smooches of Hollywood. They have different meanings, yet are similar in nature. So let's get back to the basics, shall we? Why do we even kiss at all? Where did it come from? I wanna try to answer that. But to do that, we gotta start at the beginning. The oldest evidence of kissing comes from 3,500 year old ancient Hindu Vedic Sanskrit texts that describe kissing as, check this out, inhaling each other's souls. Damn, that's deep. And it was also definitely seen in some Egyptian hieroglyphics as people standing very close to each other, sometimes mouth to mouth. At an Association for the Advancement of Science meeting on the science of kissing, Helen Fisher, an evolutionary biologist, submitted multiple reasons for lip locking. She believes that kissing is involved in the three main types of attraction humans have. Sex drive, which is ruled by testosterone, romantic love, which is ruled by dopamine and other feel-good hormones, and then attachment which involves bonding chemicals like oxytocin. Kissing, she states, evolved to help on all three fronts. Saliva, aka spit, mostly swapped during romantic kissing, has testosterone in it. Feel-good chemicals are distributed when we kiss that help fuel romance. And kissing also helps unleash chemicals that promote bonding, which provides for long-term attachment necessary for raising offspring. Some mammals have close contact with each other's faces via licking, grooming, sniffing, which may transmit the necessary information. Kissing can absolutely be traced to primates. Chimpanzees and bonobos are known for kissing on the lips. Bonobos use tongue. But sometimes for them, these gestures are a way for them to reconcile, not a form of foreplay. So it's basically like, Hello there, Margaret. I wish to bring you my apologies 
for throwing feces in your face right when we woke up this morning. I woke up on the wrong side of the tree. Now get over here and put your tongue in my mouth so we can move past this. Across Europe, a peck on the cheek is a common cultural greeting. One on the lips is mostly considered a romantic gesture. And in India, Bangladesh, and Thailand, it's a private thing altogether. Still, some societies don't consider kissing romantic at all. Our appetite for kissing seemingly has to do with our cultural beliefs surrounding it. It's not that these cultures aren't sexual, the researcher said, but that the kiss is not seen as a sexual expression. Beyond the cultural aspect, kissing allows us to get close enough to a potential mate to get essential characteristics about them even though it's more of a subconscious thing. Part of this information exchange is most likely facilitated by pheromones, chemical signals that are passed between animals to help send messages. And researchers hypothesize that pheromones can play a role in human behavior as well. Perhaps a bad first kiss means more than first date jitters. It could also mean there's a real lack of actual chemistry. Why do we even feel the need to kiss though? There are countless songs about it. It's plastered all over every form of media you can think of. Kissing is supposed to what, equal love, right? Or lust, or maybe you just had nothing else to do. Or maybe if you're in some of the deeper parts of the South, it's a way to know who's related. Are you guys like celebrating an anniversary or something? I could absolutely take a picture for you. Um, thank you so much, man. That's real kind of you, but we'll pass on that for now. We actually just came from our family reunion over at that Piggly Wiggly parking lot. It got real boring, so we just had to bail. You know, we could just throw our hands in the air and blame kissing on evolution. All of this is important in advancing its ultimate goal, which is successful procreation. Okay, I'm gonna come at you with a quick kissing fact. Do we have any stressed people that are watching this? Anyone feeling a lot of anxiety or too much on their plate? Did you know that kissing unleashes a host of feel-good chemicals? I know we kind of talked about that earlier, but it has proven to help reduce stress and increase social bonding. So, I don't know, put that in your back pocket for a rainy day. And another thing, have you ever wondered why we close our eyes when we kiss? Other than someone thinking we were super creepy if we kept them open, the first kiss may very well have taken place in this southern Asian country. Four major texts in the Vedic Sanskrit literature suggest an early form of kissing. Dating all the way back from 1500 BC, they describe the custom of rubbing and pressing noses together. All right, so this is how I'm kind of picturing it in my head. This is just my theory, but eventually, I kind of feel like someone might have just slipped when they were doing that whole nose rubbing thing and they just happened to land on each other's lips and they realized, whoa, lips are sensitive and I kind of liked it. Let's do it again. And then about 500 years later, the epic poem Mahabharata contained references of lip kissing. She set her mouth to my mouth and made a noise that produced pleasure in me, it said. <clears throat> I don't know if that was beautiful or gross. Let's just say it was both, maybe? Around 326 BC, kissing began spreading from India thanks to the conquering armies of Alexander the Great. And from there, kissing spread throughout the world, taking on different meanings and implications. Plagues and pandemics definitely made kissing less frequent among peers and acquaintances, but it never went away. Clearly, because we out here smooching y'all, come rain, shine, or plague, we gon' kiss. And lastly, one of the best things in my opinion about kissing is that mostly, we don't have to think about any of this. It just kind of happens. Something evolutionary, societal, and profound happens all at the same time. So just close your eyes, pucker up, and let nature take its course. Speaking of nature, I think it's only right for me to end this topic with a beautiful and powerful quote. And it goes like this. You and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals. So let's do it. Like they do on the Discovery Channel. Consensually, of course. Seriously, thank you so much for watching this episode of Unsubscribe. I'm having a lot of fun making these, and I know I was a little bit sillier in this episode, but I kind of figured maybe it might evolve over time and I don't know, I'm easing myself back into talking straight to you. So if you have any ideas for other topics, put that in the comment section below. I'd love to hear them and I might use them for a future video. Also remember that I do a live stream right after this comes out. So follow me on all socials to see where I'm at and I will see you then. Be nice to yourselves, be nice to people and au revoir. <laughs>